So uh, we can get started. Uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, Takato Yoshimura, which will talk about uh, collision rate onset for quantum integrable systems. And uh, if Takato, can, can you yes, share your I screen? Yes, can share, sure, let me, yes. Oops. So, okay, do you see it? Yeah, please, okay, go. That's good. Okay, so, uh, right, uh, let me uh, first thank for the organizers for kindly inviting me to give a talk in this workshop. I think this is really a great way to keep the community united. So, uh, yeah, it's really a great pleasure. So, um, what I'm going to talk about uh, in this talk is about my recent work with Harvard Schwarm, uh, about the collision rate ansatz for quantum integral systems. So um, here, the collision rate ansatz refers to a particular ansatz for one of the most important quantities in the business of generalized hydrodynamics, which is a um, hydrodynamic theory for um, integral systems. Okay, so let's get started. The plan is as follows. So I think as a first speaker, I'm entitled to have a pleasure of reminding you of some basic stuff about uh, um, plastic and diffusive uh, hydrodynamics. So I'm going to talk about it. And then um, uh, later on, I will move on to some uh, generalized hydrodynamics and uh, a proof about collision rate ansatz in integral systems. Okay, so uh, hydrodynamics. So uh, this talk will be all about hydrodynamics. Um, it's it, uh, it's a simple idea. It's a basically an effective theory for describing the long wavelength dynamics of some interacting many body systems. It doesn't have to be quantum uh, um, or cross I mean, it uh, either works. And uh, for just simply, so let's consider some one dimensional interacting many body systems with this number of conservation laws. And um, simply stated, the idea of hydrodynamics is um, local equilibrium and its stable propagation. But uh, it's uh, simple to say, but there are a lot in this uh, statement. And in, in practice, this idea is implemented through uh, the continuity equations. So uh, basically, you can uh, write down the continu continuity equations for the average of the charge density and current, like this, where this average is taken with respect to uh, some initial ensemble. And this is always uh, correct, and it holds at uh, whatever situation, what but uh, whatever time. And now um, this uh, idea of hydrodynamics, which is local equilibrium and uh, stable propagation is uh, achieved. Basically this hydrodynamics allows you to replace this current average with this uh, derivative expansions. So the first uh, guy is describing the ballistic transport. <coughs> so it's uh, the simplest, but the second one is a bit um, more intricate, which is characterizing diffusive broadening of the ballistic transport. Uh, and this is a um, uh, kind of subleading term in, in, term, in the sense of uh, derivative expansion. And because of this uh, spatial derivative, this is, can be capable of describing the finer scale dynamics than this ballistic transport. And you might wonder if you persist this procedure, namely inclusion of higher and higher derivatives, this uh, description items gets uh, more refined and refined, but that is actually, um, as far as I know, that's not, not true. I mean, it's, results in neither um, the result that is not really uh, physically sensible or just gives rise to nothing additional. So in general, you basically uh, truncate after this diffuse, diffusive correction, I mean the second term, and then uh, what you get is nothing but the famous Navier-Stokes uh, equation. All right, um, so I didn't defi haven't defined define this uh, matrix A and D. So this A matrix is simply defined by this differential ratio. Uh, um, involving J and Q, and this is this, uh, governing the basic dynamics. Well, this uh, D matrix, I mean, this is really a diffusive uh, matrix, is uh, controlling the diffusive broadening of the basic trajectories. Um, another quantity that is equivalent to uh, actually this uh, A matrix is the, its eigenvalues, which we will denote effective velocity B, F. Uh, is also going to play an important role. And actually what I'm going to do really is to determine the form of this effective velocity for integral systems. Right, but um, 
just these are some uh, equations and definitions. You might not really have um, good intuition as to what these quantities describe. So to have some intuition, it might be instructive to consider some weak perturbation to the initial background ensemble. So you initially say have some homogeneous background ensemble and you locally perturb that uh, ensemble. And what happens then is that uh, some uh, ripples on top of the homogeneous background ensemble that is propagating with some velocity. And because I'm considering weak perturbation, this velocity is basically uh, constant. And this is nothing but effective velocity. So um, I'm here considering normal mode. It's a kind of linear transformation of the original physical um, fluid variables. It's just a linear transformation. And it, uh, the good thing about it is that it has a unique velocity. So uh, this normal mode profile is spreading like this, ah, sorry, propagating with effective velocity. And what uh, then this diffusion constant or matrix does is to um, allow this profile to broaden uh, in the course of time evolution. And this is controlled by this uh, t to the one half, basically. It's the broadening. Um, but there are, there are actually, in particular one dimension, uh, the cases that um, where this diffusion constant for some uh, component is diverging, uh, which results in this um, uh, broadening we, controlled by a different uh, exponent, not one half, but some other components, uh, exponent like one third or some other fractions. And this is called anomalous uh, diffus uh, diffusion in general. And I guess this is a topic uh, Beer and Jacopo will be talking about, uh, I think, today's session, after our session, I guess. But not, I'm not going to talk about it. Um, today, I will be really focusing on the ballistic transport. And it, in, in particular, it's um, how to determine this um, form of effective velocity for interval systems. OK, so far, it's uh, all um, applicable to any uh, interacting many body systems also in higher dimensions, but from now on, I will shift to the uh, integrable systems. Okay, so uh, in integrable systems, you have a very nice machinery called thermodynamic bed and that's, uh, that allows you to do a, um, a statistical mechanics in a very systematic fashion. And uh, also it allows you to write down these uh, two important ingredients in hydrodynamics, which are uh, charge density average, and uh, current uh, average in terms of quasi-particle basis. So I guess a lot of you uh, saw this uh, expression already, but nonetheless, let me uh, briefly uh, describe. So this uh, role of theta in this expression is called root density. It's characterizing some density of distribution particles, quasi-particles. H of theta, on the other hand, is really simply uh, one particle eigen value of the charge qj. And by just merely looking at them, you notice that they are almost the same, except this the um, appearance of effective velocity in the current. And its, uh, it's form is actually known from this uh, our initial works and also the works by uh, Bruno and others. Um, and it's really a functional of rho of theta. So, um, but this uh, form is, uh, was originally conjectural. I mean, we, we did provide some sketchy proofs, but it was conjectural. But now we have basically two different proofs that establish this, uh, the form of the effective velocity. So one of uh, them is <clears throat> making use of the form factor expansion, basically, and it's a uh, resummation. Another one is uh, more recent, and it was uh, done by the Blush. It, uh, by making use of some sort of long range deformation to the inter in integrable spin chains. Uh, so we have two different kind of uh, proofs. Uh, but uh, either way, it gives rise to the same results. So there's uh, really no doubt as about this, the form of the effective velocity. Uh, so today, what I'm going to do is um, uh, to pr provide you a new proof. Uh, that relies neither on the form factor expansion or deformations. And I think I, uh, okay, so I also wrote down the, this uh, hydro equation. So by just plugging this Q and J uh, um, and their average into this um, continuity, equa continuity equation, and then what you see immediately is that uh, this hydro equation at the level of quasi-particle uh, must hold. 
So this is uh, what we normally call G generalized hard dynamic equation. And this is uh, what the, <clears throat> the very equation that describes the ballistic uh, transport in integrable systems. Uh, of course, if you want to include a diffusive correction, then it's something uh, additional appears in the right hand side, but that is not what I'm going to talk about. Okay, so uh, time remaining. Okay, I think I still have time. Uh, right, so this uh, effective velocity is um, has a nice um, allows us to have some nice understanding, intuitive understanding from uh, the scattering picture. So. Uh, Basically, in a fluid of quasi particles, I mean, quasi particles is basically the elementary excitations in integral systems. Effective, effective velocity is the mean velocity of a trace of particle, basically a particle that you, are, you focus on. With the incoming velocity V of theta, when traveling over a large distance delta x for large time t, delta t. So there is a relation between these three quantities. And here, uh, <clears throat> What, we, what is intriguing is that you can basically decompose this uh, large distance, um, travel distance by this trace particle into three um, components. So the first term is really simple. It's just describing um, spatial displacement that is um, uh, generated by freely propagating uh, trace particle. But of course, that, that is not the end of the story. You would have uh, I mean, you're considering a fluid of quasi particles. So, in the course of time evolution, your trace particle will undergo a lot of collisions with other uh, quasi particles. And that effect is encoded through the second and third term. And you uh, notice that there, uh, the only difference between these second and third terms are the sign in front of the summation. And this is really stemming from the fact that depending on whether your trace particle hits other quasi particles from left or right, you would get different um, uh, sign. Uh, so that is the reason why you have different signs on, uh, in front of the summation. And then uh, what is summing over, uh, what is being summed over is this jump distance, which is uh, uh, what I'm denoting by uh, phi of theta. This is related to the two particle scatter matrix. Uh, okay, so, uh, you can basically consider it as this is a, a travel distance as an accumulation of the jump uh, that is uh, happening at every collision with other, other quasi particles, plus this freely propagating, uh, I mean, this spatial displacement that is generated by this uh, freely propagating uh, free propagation. And uh, by, uh, you can just look at this, for example, a cartoon I drew. Uh, for example, right on the side, this is really happening, what is happening when this tracer particle is propagating in the space time. So upon the collision, you, um, so in here, I'm depicting the case where I interpret this collision as a kind of sticking process. I mean, what upon the collision, two cosi particles stick each other, and then after some time delay, they uh, start propagating with the same velocity as before. But this results in indeed this spatial displacement. <clears throat> I mean, this is microscopically different from the, you know, what I was talking about. I mean, jump, this accumulation of jump distance, but um, uh, macroscopically, this uh, interpreting as the accumulation of jump, jump distance or accumulation of this time delay are basically equivalent. So I'm depicting this uh, time delay case. Um, okay, what is important here really is that uh, whatever interpretation you have, uh, what is accumulating is this phase shift, uh, phase shift phi. And by carefully um, calculating this uh, contribution to this uh, distance, what you end up with is this uh, very nice formula for the effective velocity, which is really an integral equation. Um, so you can basically do a standard iterative uh, procedure and then you can solve this integral equation. All right, so this is the kind of picture you uh, can have in your mind when talking about this effective velocity in inter integrable systems. Okay. I cannot go to the next slide for some, okay. Right, so the proof. So uh, this proof is going to be really simple. Only two inputs are needed. The first one is the symmetry of B matrix. So uh, 
I guess you are familiar with charge charge susceptibility matrix, which is standard susceptibility matrix involving just two charge densities. But you can also uh, define charge current susceptibility matri uh, matrices, which are denoted by B, uh, like this. It's just differentiating current with respect to some chemical potentials. And I'm, of course, considering some uh, uh, stationary GGE here. Uh, Okay, so obviously this matrix C is symmetric, but what is less obvious is that the B matrix is actually also symmetric. Um, you can kind of uh, show that, uh, that the B matrix is also actually symmetric by invoking some uh, stationarity of the state or uh, clustering for the correct uh, correlation functions. Um, in general, this uh, symmetry B matrix, B matrix is satisfied. That, so that's what we can expect in general. The second one is, uh, is about the existence of a self-conserved current. So uh, this is also quite often the case. For example, if you consider some Galilean systems with uh, that conserve the number of particles, then your particle current is basically conserved and it equals the momentum. Uh, here, mass is set to one. Um, on the other hand, for example, in the XXZ spin half chain, the energy current is always conserved and it coincides with the higher charge Q2. So in many cases, you have a self-conserved current, I mean, in basically unique self-conserved current. But uh, there are some known cases where such a situation is not happening. Uh, the one of the prominent example is the fermi hubbard model, which in which model the energy current is not even if energy current is conserved. So um, it is good to uh, bear in mind that there are exceptions. But uh, my proof is going to work for uh, as long as these two inputs are always satisfied. OK, so uh, the starting point of the proof is to write this current average in this fashion. So this is always possible just by merely invoking how this charge uh, density average looks like the first guy. Uh, which is nothing but integration or, uh, uh, of some uh, functions of the concept uh, momentum. And it's also linear in the HJ of theta. I mean, the one particle in gamma of QJ. So um, by just uh, from this uh, fact and also continuity equation, it's uh, always guaranteed that you can write this current average in this way. Uh, what is just uh, not known is that how I mean, the, the, the part except this HJ of theta, this, this bit is uh, still uh, not fixed by this consideration. So what I'm going to do is to write this uh, integrand in this way, and I, I'm going to determine, I mean, claim, I'm going to claim that V bar has to be indeed be given by no form of effective velocity. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so uh, let's suppose that we have a pair of indices A and B, that gives this uh, bridging pair. So JA is conserved and it coincides with QB. From this, you'd have uh, immediately this uh, identity between C and B matrices. And from using, um, by using the symmetry of C and B matrices I was talking about, this immediately also implies this uh, second identity, CJB equals BJA. And this is precisely the, uh, the identity that I'm going to rely on. So the symmetry of V matrix and the, it is the existence of a bridging pair admits this identity. I mean, this second identity can be also written in this way, right? Uh, all right, so this extremely simple relation. I mean, uh, it's as if it says almost nothing, but um, this is actually a non trivial identity. It's going to be a kind of core identity in the proof. Okay, so the virtue of this identity is that this derivative with respect to um, chemical potentials directly go through this integrands. I mean, this um, it applies to uh, integrand and also it doesn't affect Hj of theta because it's uh, not a function in chemical potential. So what happens is that this identity can be actually recast into uh, the identity at the level of quasi particle. Uh, like this. So this is really, I mean, the same argument that we do when deriving the generalized hydrodynamic equations. Okay, so you have this identity. 
So uh, from this, you can do a little bit of manipulations to the right-hand side, and then you can <clears throat> basically show that this right-hand side of the identity equals uh, something like this. Uh, the uh, derivative of uh, rho times vf uh, with respect to mu a. So um, this can be shown very easily. And this means that, um, and also this, uh, you can show explicitly for systems that are known to possess a self constant current. And this identity um, basically can uh, means that then this uh, rho times v bar minus vf is constant in mu a. So this is uh, what we can uh, say um, up to now. Now, uh, depending on the model, the argument might be a little different, but um, uh, in, uh, fundamentally they are the same. For instance, in the leap linear model, uh, which is the Gaussian invariant integrable field theory, you can easily show that rho of theta goes to zero whenever you're taking this limit. I mean, mu a goes to infinity. So this free constant must be zero. And this then claims that um, V bar has to be uh, the same as effective velocity, I mean, no form of the effective velocity. So this is it, basically. This is the end of the proof. And it's very simple, like uh, just uh, some uh, few line calculation, calculations actually show that. Um, all right, a similar reasoning is also actually possible in the case of XXT spin half chain. And more broadly, in the um, uh, XYZ spin half chain, uh, because they have also a uh, booster operator. OK, uh, so I think I'm kind of running on time. Um, so the symmetry of B, B matrix is, like I said, always basically guaranteed. I mean, not maybe not always, but uh, in, in most cases, uh, as long as your system satisfies some very basic properties. Um, yeah, but then the question now is, do we always have a self-concept current in integral systems? Uh, and the answer is, uh, like I was uh, mentioning, quite often, yes, but uh, not always. And, and one exception is for Hubbard model. Um, one simple um, kind of uh, circumstantial evidence that, te that um, tells you that the uh, Fermi Hubbard model um, cannot have a, a self constant current is that um, so what lies behind this thing, uh, the existence of uh, the self constant current is the existence of a booster operator that can be written in as a form of um, the first moment of some constant charge. And indeed, the Fermi Hubbard model does have a booster operator, but it cannot be written in that way. So that could that would be probably the reason why it ha doesn't have self constant current. Okay, so I think I should probably conclude. So the, the main message is that um, effective velocity is basically covering the plastic transport in any systems, including inter in integrable systems. Um, but for as for the, the integrable systems, basically by invoking the symmetry of B matrix and the existence of self constant current, you can determine the functional form of the effective velocity. Um, yes, and also you not, I guess you notice that it, uh, there's no doji argument in it. It's a really as rigorous as thermodynamic bed and that could be. So I think it's a good thing. Um, also, uh, like I said, from Hubbard models is an exception that escapes our argument, but I guess there is a way to uh, kind of generalize our approach to establish collision rate standards for effective velocity in the frame Hubbard model. Right. Um, and also, I was just talking ex exclusively about effective velocity or in general, uh, the current generated by Hamiltonian flow. But you might as well also consider the flows generated by other constant charges. And accordingly, we can also define sort of generalized current associated to that flows. And um, our approach can actually also work for that to, to establish the form of the generalized current. So uh, we didn't write that in the paper, but um, uh, it's actually possible. OK, the final remark is that the boost operator is up, like I was uh, briefly mentioning, it's important in, in this proof. 
and actually also uh, priest operators appear in in the, in the recent work by Walash about uh, long range deformation through the uh, integral spin chains. And in doing so, he established also the effective velocity. So boost operator seems to appear here and there. Um, and I think it's very natural to wonder if there's any universal um, uh, role this boost operator could play in generalized hard dynamics. And um, yes, that would be very nice to be clarified. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, I'm more or less done. So thank you for your attention. Okay, so thanks. Uh, I don't know, I can clap in myself. <laughs> uh, good, so we have uh, five minutes for uh, questions. Are there any questions? Ah, to ask questions, just unmute yourself and ask it, okay? Can I, can I just, uh, do you hear me? Please. Yes, I do, yeah, yep. yes. And I, I want to ask Takato, I, I do you understand yeah, yeah. why the presence of a single sub concert current can prove, uh, can prove the symmetry of the v matrix? In the end, it's just one angle, no? Oh. I mean, the v matrix, I mean, v matrix, v matrix is always symmetric for any component. Oh, the v, so the, maybe the C, uh, just, I don't remember now the notation. If you can go back to the slide, this. Yeah, you can stop me. Of, uh, the, Current and the Q. You Where? Use, uh, as at the point to say that we are using the uh, presence of a self conserved current to put the symmetry of a correlation function. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes. So is the uh, the B matrix. But yes, this, this is defined by, by a single uh, self conserved charge. So there is a charge. There is a current mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and the current is conserved that proves the mm -hmm. symmetry of the whole B-matrix for whatever kind of charges you want to put in. Mm -hmm. I didn't get this point. Why you need only one uh, set? It's not, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be. I mean, it happens to be that it's just, there is a, always a unique safe conserved current. I mean, the point is that from just the existence of only uh, a, a safe conserved current, it doesn't have to be unique, just some, Concept current, and from that you can generate. I mean, do this kind I, of. I uh, understand thing. why a single one is sufficient to prove the symmetry of the whole B matrix on all the other currents and uh, charges. No, I think I said, like I said, V matrix is symmetric for. Any Let me just. For I think. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think there are two separate points, uh, Alvise. So yeah. you're saying that B is always symmetric, if I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is and then you true. also need the second point, which is this uh, self-conserved quantity, yes. self-conserved mm -hmm. current. Yep. It's a separate issue, but B is always symmetric. This is what. Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, we we do need to to input. I mean, uh, not uh, uh, failing to have uh, one of them is really, um, I think, uh, invalidate our proof. So we have to have both of them. Okay. 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 Thank you. Mm. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. I, do, yes. I just wanted to ask a simple, probably trivial question, but I was wondering if, uh, if there is anything non-trivial when you have more than one particle species, so more than one effective velocity? Uh, well, I don't think so. I mean, uh, for example, in the XXP, this P half chain, you can also generalize this uh, uh, argument very uh, trivially. Uh, it, uh, the fact that uh, many case uh, models, I mean, except some uh, very special models like framing Hubbard model, uh, uh, the fact that uh, those models have uh, self concept current does not change. So um, argument go through really. I mean, this, for example, this identity has nothing to do with the particle species. So the having mod particle species, that fact will probably enter into some, uh, yeah, like for example, somewhere like this, but um, it does not uh, change anything. You can do a similar argument for any every single component. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, has nothing to do with uh, part, uh, number of species. I would say. Thanks. Yeah. Hi everyone, and hi Takato. I would like to Hello. just add that uh, you didn't mention, but there is also a new microscopic proof which I put to the archive like three weeks ago or something like this. 
I, I know, also, I, I'm aware of that. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, but you didn't mention. So it. Uh, Sorry. Also, <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a, my, my, but, hmm? does it is, is this kind of a new proof for the effective velocity as well? I thought just thought that you um, established that the current uh, operators. I mean, you you basically found a way to construct current operator using the algebra. Yeah, but it also it, it leads to the proof. Yes. Okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Sorry to mention. Sorry okay. To thanks. But also, um, it's good for Balas to mention this, but for uh, going deeper, I think it's better to do it in the discussion session later. Okay. Uh, a very quick question, otherwise we have to move on. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, thanks Takato again.